Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple released macOS Sonoma 14.4.1. This update addresses some of the major problems in the 14.4 update that was released two weeks ago. So we're gonna go over all that, plus a live demo installing the update on our supported Mac. Then we're gonna cover Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs on our fleet of Sonoma devices to make sure the installation goes good. Plus we got a possible breakthrough for non-metal. You're gonna wanna stick around for that, so let's jump in and get started. Along with the Sonoma 14.4.1 update, Apple also released Ventura 13.6.6, but they did not release an associated Monterey update, so that still stays on 12.7.4. On the Safari side, 17.4.1 was updated and included in the 14.4.1 update for Sonoma, and it was also made it available as a separate download and software update for macOS Ventura and macOS Monterey. Xcode remains 15.3 and the same with command line tools. Our demonstration Mac for the 14.4.1 update is a 2020 M113 inch MacBook Pro. To be able to install the update, all we need to do is go into system settings and then click on general and then software update, or you can click on the bar right up here when it finds a software update. This Mac is file vault encrypted and I'm using a test Apple ID account that I always use. So we can test the iCloud, we can test file vault and all those pieces when we do our update. To get more information about the update, all you need to do is click on more info. What's interesting about this update Update, Apple did not include the normal piece in here that tells about the update and a lot of people were already talking about that today. Now this Mac is on 14.4 so it's going to be one of the smallest updates at 1.15 gigabytes. It will be larger if you're updating from 14.3 or 14.3.1. Now to get the update started what you need to do is click on update now and agree and we'll type in our password. Now, if you're coming from an unsupported Mac, the update is going to be 13.5 gigabytes in size. And remember, that is normal for unsupported Macs with Open Core Legacy Patcher. Remember, the preparing phase will go automatically in the background if you have the automatic downloads turned on for download new updates and available. It will download the update. It won't install it, but it will prepare it and get it ready for the update and then prompt you up here whether it's ready to restart or not. And then it only takes about five minutes. But we want to be able to monitor how long it takes to prepare. And I document that so we're gonna let this go install the update and we'll see how long it took to install okay we are back up after the update and our build version is 23 e224 apple did not release a beta or a release candidate of 14.4.1 before release so that is the only version available for this update I track how long it takes to prepare the update and install the update after the restart on every single Mac OS Sonoma update. And this one was right in line with all of the smaller dot release hotfixes. So for example, 14.3.1 took about four minutes to prepare and four minutes to install. Same thing here with 14.4.1. And we have a total install time from the start of preparation to the start of we're back up on the working desktop of eight minutes. And you can see the difference between a large feature update like that release 14.4 at 16 minutes and then 11 minutes on 14.3 update so that's why i keep track of those now let's talk about the apple silicon firmware and t2 intel bridge os the apple silicon firmware was not updated in 14.4.1 and the bridge os update for intel was also not updated and this is normal for a smaller dot release security update or a hotfix like this and for safari we already talked about that was updated to 15.11.14 Apple did release a full installer of 14.4.1 and you can use this to create a USB installer for any kind of troubleshooting and an IPSW restore file for Apple Configurator 2 to restore your Apple Silicon Mac with 14.4.1. Now let's take a look at what the 14.4.1 update fixes. This update provides bug fixes for your Mac, including USB hubs connected to external displays, causing issues with the USB hubs and monitors with USB ports. And there were several reports of mice, keyboard, and other peripherals no longer being detected after the update. And you can see that the Mac Rumors article followed multiple users reporting on Reddit, Twitter and Facebook, all these different reports of problems with their uh, USB peripherals, even KVMs were having problems. The next issue was is copy protected audio unit plugins designed for professional music apps may not open or pass validation. And that was also covered in the summary article for the audio unit plugins crash for Pace and iLock protections for universal audio, for example, in Logic Pro. And the third one, 
is apps that include Java may quit unexpectedly. And that was pretty interesting because that's when some of those applications like VMs, games, or different development software that are based on the Java platform. You can see here that this one got all the way up to Oracle's Senior Director of Product Management that issued a tech bulletin that says, an issue introduced in macOS 14.4 which causes Java processes to terminate unexpectedly is affecting all Java versions from eight to early access builds of JDK 22. There is no workaround available. And since there's no easy way to revert Mac OS update, affected users might be unable to return to a stable configuration unless they have a complete backup of their systems prior to the update. So hopefully they were able to wait a little bit because that was about a two week span there with the issues if they updated immediately here. It's really again great that apple was able to get this update out really quickly to be able to fix those java issues now let's talk about the security updates for 14.4.1 we talked about safari 17.4.1 you can see that there is one cve for web rtc that is fixed with the safari update and there is os level fixes for back with sonoma even though that web rtc has the same cve number it is listed twice for the operating system and for Safari. We also have a core media fix here. So there's only two fixes and it does not say here, these issues are being exploited in the wild. So that's good to see that that's not the case at this point. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores. Before I run the benchmark, I make sure all the applications are closed. I make sure the battery is at 100% and we make sure that processes like spotlight indexing and stuff like that is already finished to try to get the most accurate score. We've got for 14.4 last time, we got a 23.94 and an 87.82 for our multi. After installing 14.4.1, we got a 23.97 and an 87.90, so right on target. You can also take a look at all of my benchmarks that I run at the Mr. Macintosh blog account at the geekbench.com browser. Now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs and 14.4.1 and Open Core Legacy Patcher application version 1.4.2. I'm going to put a new section in the Mac OS Sonoma articles that hopefully gives you a little bit of an information about the latest update. So you can check here after I post the information. So for example, I like to put the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher here and the latest Sonoma update status. So I'm showing it's still testing because we're doing the testing live right now. And after I'm done with the video, I'll put the information right here and then we've got the kernel debug kit or KDK status here, how it remains on the previous build or if a new one was released. And remember when Apple releases a KDK, they usually don't do it up until about six hours later. So I always recommend waiting at least six hours or until you can see a new KDK version before updating, especially if your Mac requires that. And then I put a little information down here about the latest update. Now, right now we are still on 1.4.2. So let's take a look at our fleet of test devices. When we're testing for Open Core Legacy Patcher, we're testing to make sure the update installs properly. We're testing to make sure that the application, if it needs to download the kernel debug kit works, all those pieces are really important. Then once it comes back up, we wanna make sure that we can log in. The automatic root patcher comes up to, in, to apply the patches after the update. We wanna make sure our sound, our Bluetooth, our Wi-Fi, all those pieces are working properly. We've got our transparent dock, login window, our menu bar, all those things are working. And for this 2017, we are also looking for the T1 security chip. We're also looking for Touch ID, and we're also looking to make sure the touch bar works. And in this situation, all those pieces work. This 2017, MacBook Pro is running, running perfect after installing the 14.4.1 update and Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.4.2. Next up is our Retina 15 inch mid 2014 MacBook Pro. We picked this one because it is a coupler based GPU. So we wanna make sure that installs and works okay. And we installed the 14.4.1 update. Everything went okay and well with that. We've got our Bluetooth, we've got our sound, we've got our Wi-Fi, everything's working with that. Our auto join Wi-Fi also worked. This 2014 MacBook Pro is working really good and there was no issues during the installation. Next up is our late 2013 Mac Pro trash can. I use this device as our caching server too. So you can see that we had a total of almost 70 gigabytes total served. That means it'll download the update once and then it caches it. Then any Mac that is requesting that update 
it can be served from that cache and we served 54 gigabytes worth of updates from this caching server box. What does not happen though is that even though that's cached, this Mac Pro cannot use that cached update. It still has to download separately, which is kind of a bummer, but that is what it is. Now we are running 14.4.1 in here with 1.4.2, and we did not need to download and cache the KDK, and I'll show you what that looks like. You can take a look at the log here, which is in users shared folder. And when we get down to the part right here where it's trying to get the latest KDK, there was no direct match found, meaning that it checked the site. There was no new update for a KDK like 14.4.1. So it falls back to the closest match, which is 14.4. And that's totally fine. And it already found that package in the library developers folder. So if we go into there, into developer folder, we can see that the KDK is already in here as the package. So all it did is unpack that and uses it here. So it does not have to download. And that's why you didn't see the pop up for the download because it didn't need it. It was already cached. If you're coming from 14.3, you will have to download the 14.4. But since we were updating from 14.4, we already had it. So that explains the KDK situation. Situation. But other than that, everything's working very well on this Mac Pro trash can. No issues whatsoever. We've got our Wi-Fi Bluetooth and everything's working great. Next up is our Mac Mini late 2012. And we picked this one because it has an Intel only GPU. So we don't have to get the KDK or any NVIDIA patches. That's all it has on this system. We installed 14.4.1, no problems whatsoever. On 1.4.2 OpenCore Legacy Patcher, we've got our Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, no issues. Everything's working great on this Mac Mini 2012. Last but not least is our trusty 2010 Mac Pro. We've got a NVIDIA video card that has metal compatibility in it right now. We are running a NVIDIA 510 NVS with two gigabytes of RAM. It's one of the cheapest metal cards that you can get but it does the trick for having metal support we also have an upgraded wi-fi and bluetooth card and i want to show you what that looks like this is the previous screenshot that i grabbed before i put the new wi-fi bluetooth card in there you can see that it had to utilize legacy wireless patches which are the patches that had problems previously for mac os ventura and mac os monterey but with the new compatible wi-fi and bluetooth card we now are using the modern wireless networking drivers for open core legacy patcher so this mac pro is running great bluetooth wi-fi everything's working Perfectly no issues whatsoever on the installation. 14.4 caused problems for metal compatible Macs, which are from 2008 to 2011. That's why you are not supposed to install 14.4 or 14.4.1 on any non-metal Mac because you're gonna have nothing but problems with login window crashes, menu bar issues, all kinds of different things. This has been an ongoing issue since 14.4 has been released and the non-metal developers, ACNT and Bot, Edu Kavas, have been working on this to see if they were able to solve this. And the good news is, is that there's been a note here by ACNT and Bot that it turns out that the root cause was his cycle through Windows initializer, which caused AppKit to load prematurely and somehow resulted in every app being assigned to its own audit session. Still unclear on exactly why this happens in 14.4 specifically, but by simply disabling that code, it resolves that issue. Now, I don't want to say that this is going to be 100% fixed, but this is a huge breakthrough. And now testing has been continuing since then. And we're hoping that Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.4.3 will be released that will be able to enable non-metal Macs to be able to work again. If you have a machine that's busted, which needs those patches, I've got one of those machines set up. So we'll see if we'll be able to fix it. Once 1.4.3 is released, you'll be able to know if you don't have to reinstall or if you're one of your older Macs is stuck in that situation. So we'll definitely cover that and we'll have to see how long it'll take for the developers to put together 1.4.3. But as soon as it does, you know that we'll be testing here and we'll get you the latest information. Okay, this comes with a recommendation. Do I recommend installing 14.4.1 on your supported Mac and on your unsupported Mac? Since we went over those security issues, if you're in a high security environment, I always recommend you keep secure. That's just top priority for any high security environment. Even though the 
those security issues have or been detected in the wild, that doesn't mean that you don't need to not be secure. But when we're talking about the bug fix, really important if you are affected by one of these, especially for the bug in the iCloud Drive. If you utilize iCloud Drive, that is fixed. And I did not mention that earlier. I forgot to add that in. Howard Oakley did confirm that this is fixed in 14.4.1. If you're using iCloud Drive, if you're using any kind of Java or using any or using Java or have USB hubs, yes, let's install this update because you're going to get immediate relief. But if you don't have any of these issues whatsoever and you're not using iCloud Drive, you can wait a little bit. There's no rush to initially install this, especially with the issues for Open Core Legacy Patch. I hold off for at least a week when a new update comes out to make sure that one small issue couldn't be causing problems for certain models. Um, so, and that's okay to just give a little bit of weight, see how things shake out. And then once you see that no one's been reporting large issues, it would be okay to install. But that's why I install immediately on these machines to at least get a basic sense with my fleet here if we're seeing any major issues, which with 14.4.1, everything's looking really great so far. There's my recommendation. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna be installing, if you're gonna be waiting. I can't wait till Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.4.3 coming out soon. Hopefully it is able to fix all the non-metal issues and we'll definitely be able to cover that as soon as it comes out. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.